Okay, and we are recording. All right. Um, so again, apologies for that. Uh, there were some some issues going on this morning, and had to uh, had to do the remote class today. Uh, to start off with, let's let's look at uh, if there are any questions from last class. Um, and in the meantime, let me get my digital wipe. Digital pa digital paper <laughs> ready here. There we go, and let me bring up as well the chat. Um, if you guys have any questions uh, or comments, you can you can let me know either in the chat or in audio. Either is fine. Okay, so we have this set up. It's looking good on my end. Uh, hopefully you guys can see the digital paper all right. Um, okay, so are there any questions from last class uh, or from any of the material so far up to this point? Okay, I'm not seeing any questions in chat. I'm not hearing any questions in, in the audio, so I'm going to assume there's none. I will keep my eye on chat, so if, uh, if any question does pop up, then I will, uh, I will address it as I see it. Um, again, if you're comfortable enough, you can ask uh, questions in the audio, uh, but you don't have to. You can use the, the chat. So I will be checking the chat frequently uh, to just double check and make sure there are no questions. Okay, um, so today we're going to finish up chapter seven, should finish up chapter seven. Uh, and I was looking at the, at the course schedule that we have posted and um, for this week, this is week two of classes, uh, we're only scheduled to finish chapter seven. Uh, I said last, I did say last class we were going to start chapter one, but I think we'll just stick with, uh, with chapter, chapter seven. So, um, so we'll, we'll finish up chapter seven today. Um, we have uh, section seven C, which is left for, for us in chapter seven. This, this uh, section is a little bit shorter in terms of concepts that it addresses. Uh, most of the most of the other sections have a have a larger amount, uh, but some of the some of the concepts, especially the expected value in this section, can be a little bit intimidating. So um, we'll go through some of the examples in the book. Uh, in this section, I'm going to stick with examples from the book because then it will be easier for you guys to reference that. Um, and I will be, you know, if you have any questions, you can, can let me know either uh, here in the meeting or through email. So let's go ahead and, and get started. So uh, section 7C uh, is on the law of large numbers. And there is a little bit more as well, but that is the main focus. So we're looking at the law of large numbers. And we're going to start off with what exactly does the law of large numbers state? And how that applies to what we've been looking at. So uh, the law of large numbers, and I'm going to go ahead and write this again. So uh, law of large numbers, this is the actual law here that, that is uh, given in the book. So let's uh, suppose we have an event A. So let's consider some event A. With a probability that we can calculate. So we have some probability of this event, probability of A, in a single trial. And 
All right, I have to adjust some of the stuff here on my computer. Okay, I'm gonna have to zoom out so I can get to the edge of the paper here. All right, that's gonna have to be good enough in a single trial. Okay, so we have some event with a probability that we can calculate probability uh, of a. So the law, the law of large numbers states that uh, we have two parts of this. So the first part is for a large number of trials. So as we increase the number of trials um, that we are looking at here, so for a large number of trials, The, uh, the proportion and a couple of other words for that uh, or ratio or fraction, all meaning the same thing. Proportion, the ratio, the fraction. Yeah, and that's, there we go. Um, in which the event occurs, so in, in which event A occurs, will be close to this probability that we have for the event, probability of A. Um, so an example of this would be if we are tossing a coin, um, then the probability for getting heads, for example, is one out of two. We've calculated that that's a theoretical probability. Uh, that's our theoretical probability for getting heads. As we increase the, uh, uh, so one out of two, that proportion, and you can either say this answer in the audio or type it in the chat. Uh, what is that as a decimal? Point 0.5. Point 0.5 is correct, yes, point 0.5. Uh, so that as a percentage would be 50%. Point 0.5, yes, good, I'm seeing it in the chat now. Um, there's probably a little bit of delay, uh, so apologize for that. Um, that means that as we increase the number of, of trials, so let's say we flip the coin 100 times, we should expect the, um, the proportion, the ratio, the fraction are relative frequency probability will be getting close to 0.5. And that increases as we increase the number. So if we have 1,000 trials, that will be even closer to 50%. If we have a million trials, that will be even closer to 50%. So that's the first part of the law of large numbers. And the second part, I think I already stated, but we'll, we'll write that down for the sake of having it in our notes. The larger the number of trials, the closer the proportion will be to the probability uh, P of A, probability of A. Closer the probability will be. Okay, so that's the law of large numbers. So again, it has two parts. Um, and we do have to be careful uh, in mathematics when we're talking about something like this. We have to uh, indicate when this law will hold. So this law holds
as long as each trial is independent. So what we get for, say, type, for example, if we're looking at coin, what we get for the first coin toss should not affect the probability of the next, and so on. Um, so each trial is independent of prior trial. Uh, so again, what we get for this trial will not affect the next one, and, and so on. Um, so as long as each, tr each trial is independent of prior trials, and each one uh, having the same Again, the same probability, probability of A. So each individual trial. Has the probability of the same probability of A. Okay. So again, just to reiterate, uh, we have two parts for the law of large numbers. Um, we have a, an event A with some probability that we can calculate probability of A, so that's going to be our theoretical probability. Then for a large number of trials, the proportion or the ratio or the fraction, those, again, those three words all mean the same thing. Proportion, the ratio, the fraction, uh, in which event A occurs will be close to the theoretical probability, probability of A. And the larger the number of trials, the closer the proportion will be. Um, and this holds as long as each trial is independent of prior trials. So let's look at an example. And again, um, I, wanted, I want to focus on examples in the book on this section. So we're gonna look at example one in the book. And this is on page 454. Okay. So this one, I'm going to go ahead and, and read it, and then we will go through it as a class. So what we are looking at here is we're going to look at a roulette wheel. Uh, so let me share this graphic here. So this is our standard roulette wheel. Well, um, there are some, some variations in where the numbers are and, and which numbers are uh, designate, designated as red and black. But this is our standard roulette wheel. It has 38 numbers. And uh, there are 18 black numbers, 18 red numbers. And you'll see that the numbers 0 and double 0 are green. So uh, we have our 38 numbers in that way. And we're going to assume that all of the all of the numbers are equally likely. So each one has the same, you know, it's it's all equally likely to land on one than the other. Uh, first question that we want to ask is what is the probability of getting a red number on any spin? So that's going to be the first question we'll ask. And uh, the second question is if a patron in the casino uh, spins the wheel 100,000 times, then about how many times will a red number uh, be the outcome? So those are the two questions. Um, oops, there we go. Uh, so again, this is, this is uh, for our roulette. We have our roulette wheel here. Um, so let's go back to our paper. So we have two questions. Uh, question A, what is the probability of getting a red number? So what is the probability of getting a red number? And the second question is uh, if a patron or patrons, we can have multiple 
uh, spin the wheel. Let's say 100,000 times. One hundred thousand times. About how many times? Will a red number be the outcome? Uh, there we go. Be the outcome. Okay. So we'll start with the first one. So for A, there are, uh, so let's remind ourselves, there are 38 numbers in total on the roulette wheel and 18 are red. Let's go ahead and I'm just going to write what the book has. 18 are black. And two are green. So what is the probability of getting a red? And here we're looking at the theoretical probability. So what is our probability in this case? Well, the number of outcomes we have is 38. And how many? Yes, good, 18 out of 38. That is correct. And let's find the decimal for that. So we plug this into our four function calculator. Let's round to three decimal places. So we'll get 0.474 is the probability of getting a red number. So hopefully uh, there are no questions on that. If there are, let me know if you uh, guys have any questions. Um, but th we've been doing, this part is pretty familiar. This is what we've been doing with our theoretical probability. Uh, or we could also let, write this as a percentage. Let's go ahead and do that as well, 47.4%. Okay, so B, so again, we're going to spin, let's see, spin the wheel uh, 100,000 times. And we want to know about how many times are we going to get a red number. Well, notice, um, by the law of large numbers, uh, <laughs> law of large numbers. What should we expect to get for the, uh, for the probability, for our, our proportion of red numbers out of the 100,000? Good, that is correct. Uh, what is that as a decimal or as a percent? So as a decimal or a, a percent, what we should expect is the 0.474 or the 47.4%. That's what the law of large numbers states. Now, um, that doesn't necessarily mean we will get exactly that number, although that is possible, uh, but it should be something close to that. So uh, by the law of large numbers, we expect about 47.4% of the spins to be red. And so that is uh, to take a percentage of a number, just in case, um, in case we need to review that, we take the decimal form, so that's the 0.474, and multiply that to the number in question. In this case, that's our 100,000. That's the number of times that we are spinning the wheel. 
And in this case, we're going to get 47,400 times. So by the law of large numbers, we should get about this many red numbers from our 100,000 spins. Now again, it won't be, it will almost never be exactly that number. Um, it'll be, you know, it could be over, it could be under, but it will be close. And as we increase the number of spins, then it should get closer and closer to that 47.4%. Okay, um, any questions on this example? or anything up to this point. And again, you can either ask in the audio or ask in the chat. I'm keeping my eye on the chat. Uh, yes, question? Yes, you said this is gonna all be on YouTube or online for us to watch later, because I'm actually driving. Uh, yes, yes, I will be uploading this uh, to YouTube and also linking it to Web Campus. Um, so again, that was, I apologize for the late notice. Um, that was my that was my fault. Uh, but this is this is being recorded currently, and it will be uploaded uh, today. Okay. okay. As well as the, as, yeah, yeah. Um, as well as the, uh, the the digital notes as well. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, any other questions? No questions. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and then look at the next part. The next concept in this, in this section is expected value. Uh, that is related to the law of large numbers, but it is, as a, it is a bit different. So let's look at expected value next. Uh, so first we'll look at what exactly do we mean by expected value? Then we'll look at uh, an example of expected value. And this will be from the book again. Um, and expected value, just as, as a note, expected value is something that you will be uh, needing to calculate when you do your, your theme one project. Um, so it is something that's going to show back up. Um, but I, uh, hopefully there will be enough, enough examples for that. Um, so let's go ahead and, and look at that. So expected value. So we're going to consider, we're gonna start with two events. So let's consider two events. Each with its own value and probability. So here by value, this is, um, this is more applied when we are looking at things like gambling, uh, although it does have other applications. That is mostly, uh, at least um, from the examples in this section, that's mostly all of the examples that, that the book gives you. Um, so the value would be, take for example, what, um, what you get from that event, uh, whether it is a loss of money or a gain of money. And each one has its own probability. So again, uh, if we're looking at, take for example, rolling a dice, one event could be rolling a one and the other event could be rolling everything except for a one. And so then we can find those, those probabilities. Then the expected value is calculated as follows. So the expected value It is going to be, so we'll have the expected value. I'm going to abbreviate that as EV is equal to, we're going to have the value for event one times the probability of event one plus the value for event two times the probability of event two. And I'm having some issues there. Hold on, let me try and fix that. Probability of event two. Okay. 
So that's going to be our expected value. And if we have more events, then again, we just add those events on. Uh, so if we had three events, then it would be plus the value of event three times the probability of event three. So this generalizes uh, to any number of events. And actually, before we go into the book example, let's look at, a, at another example here. So let's say we're going to flip a coin. Um, so we're going to bet $1 on a coin flip. And If we, get, uh, if we get heads, we get uh, double our bet, so we'll get $2. If we get tails, then we get nothing. We want to calculate what is the expected value for this uh, for this gambling game. So here we have a gambling game, which is on um, which is based on a coin flip. Uh, there are there are others that are going to be more complicated, and you'll see that when you when you uh, start putting your projects together. Uh, but in this case, we're just looking at a single coin flip, um, and uh, we're betting one dollar on the coin flip. If we get heads, then we get $2 back, so we've doubled our money. If we get tails, then we get nothing back. Uh, whoever we're betting against keeps the dollar. So the expected value, um, to find the expected value, first we have to split this into a couple of events. And I, I think I want to go to a new page here so I have enough room. So. In this case, uh, there are going to be three events. And it doesn't, it doesn't seem like there should be three events, but there are. So the first event is we're going to play the game. Let's look at uh, what is the probability and what is the value of that? So we're going to assume that we are going to play, the, play this game. We're going to play one round. We're going to bet a dollar. So our probability is going to be one. We are playing the game. So it's 100%, one, uh, which is one. Uh, what is the value of playing the game? So without, without any other outcomes, the coin has not been flipped yet. Um, what did we pay to play the game? One dollar, right. So uh, the value here, is that going to be a positive or a negative value? Are we gaining or losing money? Again, the, the coin hasn't been flipped yet. We're just, yes. Yep, we're just uh, playing the game. So we've lost one dollar. So the expected value, the value here, sorry. The value for this event is we lose one dollar. Okay, event two. And uh, so this is, again, this is going to be, um, whenever we're looking at a gambling game, this is always going to be the first event is you're going to play the game. You're going to assume you're playing the game. So it's going to be a probability of one and the value is going to be however much your bet is. So however much you're paying into the game uh, just to play. So event two, is we get heads. The probability of getting heads, so now we're looking at the coin flip. We've tossed the coin. What is the probability of getting a heads? It's 0.5 or one half. Yes, so let's write that as a decimal, 0.5. And for heads, what is our value? So let's go back to our example. If we get heads, we get $2. So 
in this case, we are gaining $2, so that's going to be a positive 2. Um, you don't have to write the positive. I'm going to write it uh, in this example to emphasize that we're gaining that back. And then event 3 is we get tails. And the probability of that, again, is 0.5. It's 1 out of 2. And the expected value, or not the expected value, sorry. The value of that event occurring is uh, $0. We get nothing back. And let me just make sure that that's what we wrote. Yes, OK. So we want to know, what is the expected value of playing this, this gambling game? So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the probability to the value of each one of the events and add them together. So the expected value is going to be, we take the event one, probability is one, the value is negative one, plus event two, the probability is 0 0.5, and the expected value is two. And the third event is 0 0.5, and the value is zero. And so we plug this into our calculator. Um, let's see, I have my four function here somewhere. Yeah, here it is. Got my four function. Uh, so you can either plug this all in. If you want, you can do it one at a time. Uh, you just have to be careful when you are dealing with decimals. Um, there is something that occurs when you are dealing with, with decimals. If you round, you get what's called round off error. So you do want to enter this all in at the same time. Uh, but what you should get, uh, you'll get negative one plus one plus zero is zero. So the expected value for this gambling game is zero dollars. So you neither lose money nor win money uh, is your expected value for playing this game. Um, now, uh, the expected value can be either zero or positive or negative. If the expected value is positive, then you should be gaining money. If the expected value is negative, you should be losing money. And so um, if you play the game, uh, it's kind of an, uh, a way to figure out what your odds are or what, what you should expect to get uh, when, when you play this game. Okay, so the next example, this one is from the book. Let's look at example, this one is example two in this section. And this is in the book on page 456. So I'm gonna go ahead and read through this and then we'll break it down and find what we're looking for is the expected value. This is also going to be a gambling game. So. Uh, suppose that we have $1 lottery tickets that have the following probabilities and values. So we have a one in five chance to win a free ticket, which is worth $1. Uh, one in 100 chance to win $5. Uh, one in 100,000 to win $1,000. And one in 10 million to win $1 million. We want to know what is the expected value of the ticket. Okay, so let's uh, let's go ahead and write this information down. So we have a $1 lottery ticket. We have a one in five chance to get a free ticket. Which we're gonna, which we know is one dollar in value. One in one hundred to get five dollars. To win five dollars. Okay. We have uh, one in 100,000 to win $1,000. Okay. 
and one in 10 million to win $1 million. Do so you want to know what is the expected value? Okay, so for this example, we have a lot more events going on. So um, again, the first event when we're looking at uh, expected value, especially for these gambling games, is playing the game. So that is going to be our first event. And then the other events are the different winnings that we get. So the one in five chance to win a free ticket, uh, the chance to win $5, the chance to win $1,000, and the chance to win a million dollars. That's going to be, those are going to be our events. Um, whenever you have uh, multiple events like this, um, what is probably the easiest way to set this up is using a table. So we're going to uh, set up the table as follows. We're going to have our event. In the first column, we're going to have the value in the second column, the probability in the third column, and in the fourth column, because again, we're looking for the expected value, let's go ahead and multiply the value times the probability. Okay. All right. So now we have to go through what are the events. So the event one is we purchase a ticket. So we purchase a ticket. And the value, uh, how much money do we either uh, gain or spend from purchasing a ticket? What is its value? is negative one, good. Because we're spending a dollar to buy the ticket, so it's negative one. The probability is going to be one, again, we are playing the game. And so you have negative one times one is negative one. Uh, next event, so our first event is we purchase a ticket. The next event is we could win a ticket, win a free ticket. Well, the value of a ticket is $1. And uh, notice above it says we have a one in five chance to win the free ticket. So the probability is going to be one fifth. And so what we're going to do is we're gonna take our four function. We're going to do uh, one times one fifth. We're going to round this up to the nearest uh, two decimal places since we're talking about um, money here, uh, money value. So we have one times one fifth, and we get 0 0.2. Okay. The next event that could occur is we could win $5. So the value here is five. And what is our probability for this event? Well, it's going to be the one in 100,000. So we're going to take one divided by 100,000. So we're going to plug that into our calculator. Uh, no, I'm skipping, aren't I? Winning $5 is one in 100. Sorry, one in 100. So we're going to multiply those and what we get from our four function, when we plug this in, is 0 0.05, okay? The third event that we could have occur is the winning $1,000. So again, the value is 1,000. 
let me move that down a little bit so we're not overlapping. So we, multi uh, we look at what is the probability for this event. To, so in order to get $1,000, that's a one in the 100,000 chance. So we multiply those, we plug that into our four function again, we're just using, using this. Rounding to the nearest uh, second decimal place. And here we will get 0 0.01. And our last event is winning 1 million. So 1 million, that is this number. And we have a 1 in 10 million chance. So we have 1 in 10 million. Going to multiply those. And what we'll get there is 0 0.10. Okay. So here's our table with our events. Um, any questions up to this point? So in this case, this one is a little bit easier to calculate than what, what you'll be doing for your, um, for your theme one projects. For the theme one projects, uh, you're going to be designing the gambling games. You're gonna to have to determine what the probability is. In this one, it's given directly to you. So uh, take for example, uh, winning $5 has one in 100 chance. So the probability is one out of 100. Uh, whereas if you are designing your own game, you're gonna say, well, um, I'm going to win $5 if I roll, if I'm rolling two dice, if I roll two sixes, take for example, then you'll have to determine, calculate what is the probability of rolling two sixes. Um, so when you are setting up your, your game, what you're going to uh, have is to figure out the probability. So it's going to be one extra step. Um, anyways. Okay, so I, I'm not seeing any, any questions in the chat, so I'm going to assume there are none. Um, but again, if you do have any questions, just let me know and I'll, I'll answer those as I see those. Or you can, again, ask in the audio. Uh, so how do we find the expected value then for this gambling game? Well, the expected value, if you remember, we add all of the, the products of the value times the probability. Well, that is this, uh, last column. So to find the expected value, we are adding all of these numbers together. So the expected value, and let me write that here. So the expected value is going to be the sum of the column of the probabilities times the value. So in this case, for this example, that's going to be negative one plus 0 0.20 plus, we had a 0 0.05 was the next, plus 0 0.01 plus 0 0.10. So we're going to just add all of those uh, all of those values in that column together. And we get for our value is negative 0 0.64, or uh, we can think of that as a negative 64 cents. So the expected value for playing this game, for playing this game once, is a negative uh, 64 cents. So we should expect to lose 64 cents every time we play this game. So another question that we can ask, and this one, they didn't ask in, oh, they did, okay. I mean, I was going to say, I didn't think they did, but they did ask this question. So a question that we can ask is if someone 
uh, let's say were to buy 1,000 tickets, One thousand of these tickets. What would be? Uh, and I can't type. What would be their expected winnings? Well, when we're looking at this, so. Uh, because each, each time we play the game, each time we buy a ticket, that does not affect the probabilities of the other tickets. The probabilities are still going to be the same. It's still a one in five chance to get a free ticket. It's still a one in 100 chance to get $5. So because each one of these uh, plays of the game, because each ticket is independent of the others, then by the law of large numbers, we're going to multiply the expected value to what, uh, to how many times we played the game. So by the law of large numbers, um, and I phrase this differently than the book. Sorry, let's change winnings to losings. They're expected losings. How much do they expect to lose? Okay. Um, by the law of large numbers, we'll take 1,000. That's how many tickets we're buying times the expected value of the game, which is a negative 0 0.64. And so uh, our expected losings are $640. That's how much we've lost, we should expect to lose while playing this game. Now that's not always going to be the case. There is still a possibility, a what is it, one in 10 million chance that you can get a million dollars out of this. But according to the expected value and the law, law of large numbers in general, we should expect to lose $640 if we play this game a thousand times. So if we spend a thousand dollars on this, we should expect to lose $640 from this game. So uh, this is kind of the idea of uh, expected value where this is used. Um, again, this is used in some other applications, but uh, mostly our book uses it for evaluating gambling games and um, is uh, a, a good show of why you shouldn't gamble. Okay. Uh, there is one last thing here in this section. I'm not. Um, this one I'm not going to emphasize as much. Uh, expected value and the law of large numbers are more uh, more vital for your understanding. But this is also uh, they're going to be. I want to say one, maybe two homework questions on on this next part. Uh, so this next part is what we call the gambler's fallacy. The gambler's fallacy. Is the mistaken belief. That a streak. of bad luck makes a person do for a streak of good luck. Or sometimes if you have a streak of good luck, it's the mistaken belief that the good luck will continue. So, uh, or that a streak of good luck will continue.
Now, uh, why this is false is um, when, when you are gambling, when you are playing a gambling game, the probabilities are not going to change based on previous plays of the game. You can play the game 10 times, that's not going to affect the probability of the next game. So let's take, for example, uh, this previous game that we looked at that the book presented us with these lottery tickets. If I buy 10 lottery tickets, and each one of those is either a loss or, you know, um, just getting a free ticket back. That doesn't mean that if I buy another ticket that that's more likely to be the $1 million. It's not, it's still the same probability. It's still a one in five chance to get another free ticket. It's still a one in 100 chance to get our uh, $5. So the uh, gambler's fallacy is mis you, um, you are thinking that because you've had bad luck that your luck is going to change, that, that uh, the, the, in this case, the tickets are going to give you more value the more tickets you get, and that's, that's false. The probability remains the same. It's still a one in uh, 10 million chance to get that million dollars. So the gambler's fallacy um, is thinking that, that, that the, Essentially, it's thinking that the probability is uh, dependent, is that the probability um, changes depending on what the previous outcomes were. And that is not the case. The probabilities will remain the same. Um, so that's the gambler's fallacy. And that's, that's uh, it's an easy fallacy to fall into. It's very common. Um, and that's why gambling is so addictive or part of part of what makes gambling addictive, but uh, it, is a, it is a fallacy, it is false. The probability does not change, because uh, usually with these gambling games, the, the probabilities are uh, independent, not dependent. Okay, uh, so that is section 7C, uh, and that's all that we're covering in chapter seven. So um, we'll have that homework due this weekend. Um, I am going to post the mini project quiz uh, tonight. Uh, so that will be for chapter seven. I believe that is five questions, um, mostly based on, well, all based on the material from chapter seven. I think there is one in there on uh, either expected value or the law of large numbers or both. Um, but uh, it's just going to be five questions. Um, and that is going to wrap us up for today. So are there any, uh, any last? Oh, that's a good question. Um, let me, I think I have that to where you can have multiple attempts. Let me just double check the settings on that. That is, that is a good question. Um, let's see. Uh, you have four attempts for it. So you can, you can take the quiz four times. Uh, maximum four times. Obviously, you don't have to take it more than that, but you can take it uh, up to four times. Mm -hmm. um, any other any other questions on any of the any of the material? Anything that we've talked about so far? It should keep the high score. Let me um, let me again. Let me double check that. Uh, our group projects we will begin next week. So um, I think what we will do on, I want to say Tuesday at the latest by next Thursday, we will, we will um, split it into groups and get the group project started. Um, chapter one is a lot shorter in material than chapter seven. So we should finish that fairly quickly compared with chapter seven. So we'll be starting the group projects uh, next week, either Tuesday or Thursday. Uh, let's see. Um, that's a good question. The quiz should be posted by 6 p.m. tonight. Uh, should be available. It might be available, well, actually I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, make that available right after class. So it should be, should be available there. Uh, let's see. And it will keep this, the highest score. That is what I have it set to. So you can take it four times. It'll keep the highest score. Uh, and it will be due Sunday. 
at 11.59 p.m. Uh, there's also going to be another quiz um, that's just on academic integrity verification quiz. It's, it's not going to be hard. Um, so that will be made available today as well. Um, and that will be due on Sunday. So, um, so that's, that's what we will, that's what we're looking at here. Uh, so are there any, any other uh, last minute questions? Okay. Okay, so again, chapter seven, uh, well, 7C, we talked about uh, the law of large numbers. We looked at expected value. And at the very end, we discussed the gambler's fallacy. Uh, so 7C, that homework and reading check will be due this Sunday, as well as the uh, 7B uh, reading check and homework. And uh, the mini project seven and uh, an academic integrity quiz thing, uh, will be on web campus, will be due this, this Sunday, will be available today and due this Sunday. Uh, if you have any questions, you can always send me an email. I will be uh, holding digital office hours tonight as well uh, from three to four, so you can jump in there, or uh, Friday from one to two. Um, so if there are no other questions, uh, I will talk to you guys uh, probably Tuesday, unless you have questions. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend. So uh, thanks again for this. I apologize for the last minute uh, notification, uh, but I will be uploading this and the notes on, onto uh, web campus uh, so that you can uh, download those and view, view this as well. So thanks again uh, and have a good weekend. Thank you. Thank you.